Hi guys, bonjour and welcome back to my channel. When you start cultivating anything in your life, you start developing your own rules, guidelines and principles for how to keep up with that process by observing what does and does not help you. If you are here for the first time, hello, I am Naya and this is my channel where I talk about style and beauty from a minimalist perspective. So if that is your thing, you've come to the right place. And as for me, in terms of my minimalist and wardrobe history, I was never really a hoarder, not of clothes either, in the sense that I never had an overwhelming abundance of stuff that I kept in my home. However, a lot of things came and left as I developed a shopping addiction back in 2018. To keep up with that addiction, I was buying a lot of cheap stuff like fast fashion. And as the thing I bought, were of truly bad quality and of very little perceived value to me. As a result of that and just buying and decluttering a lot of clothes, my personal style greatly suffered and never really manifested. At this moment my wardrobe is even smaller as it sits at 40 items as of right now and my journey to a curated wardrobe that only contains stuff that I really love is still ongoing and will probably never end. But there are some rules and guidelines that I have developed as a result of my journey this far that helps me keeping up with curating my wardrobe, keeping it small and make far less mistakes and shopping mistakes in the process. Actually my first rule is less of a rule and more just a principle that runs in the back of my head that I think about a lot and that is you are spoiled for choice. We live in this modern FOMO and throwaway society where everything is available to us, including all kinds of clothing under the sun and at every price range. Whatever style or item you can think of, it is out there on a hanger already. But that doesn't mean that you need any of those choices at home in your personal wardrobe. Science and studies actually show us that as humans, we are definitely happier if we are giving choices in various categories of our lives. If we have a choice of where to live, what to buy and what to wear, we are generally happier than if we had no choice. And as we are given more and more choices, studies suggest that after a while we will be just as unfulfilled by all these choices as we were when we had no choice at all to begin with. And I really try to keep this in mind in my wardrobe to let myself know that I am spoiled for choice in the world and I don't need all of that in my wardrobe as well. Now of course this doesn't mean that I think that you or I shouldn't have any choice at all, but I try to be intentional about where choice and creativity is more important for me and stick to giving myself choices in that category. I like to have more choice when it comes to jackets and as of right now I own I think like 15 scrunchies. These are generally the places where I like to have a lot of choice, either because it takes up very little space or this is generally where I like to be creative. On the contrary, I only have like five different sweaters and five different styles of tops but even these styles aren't particularly groundbreaking because I've just come to the conclusion that I am already spoiled for choice and I don't need more choices. I don't need six integrate tops to keep my wardrobe interesting because it's just gonna add more choice and it's not gonna make me happier and I will never wear them anyway. My next rule is that I keep my bags and my shoes in the same color. All of my shoes and bags are black because historically and even now I will reach for black over any other color when it comes to that category. And if I did wear belts I'd include that here as well. This rule of course is also built on the former principle that I don't need to be spoiled for choice all the time. And for me and my minimalist wardrobe it's better to build consistent style with pieces that consistently go together. And of course this helps me keep a smaller wardrobe as well. Maybe for you, you find yourself happiest when you reach for your brown shoes or your cognac bag or whatever color it might be for you. If that is the color you connect with the best, do you then really need another choice for these items? I've decided that I don't. Actually saying goodbye to choice can be quite daunting and honestly anxiety inducing. And although it's not really something I do hear mentioned, I think that taking away choice is one of those things that makes decluttering hard rather than just the fact that you're sentimentally 
assigning value to an article of clothing. When I was decluttering, I found myself holding on to items that I didn't necessarily love at all or had a special relationship to. And I think it was probably because it's scary to give choice away. In my case, sticking to black helps me build consistent style and consistent daily outfits. On top of this, I do own white sneakers and that just goes to show that there are always rules and there will always be an exception to the rule as well. My next personal rule for my minimalist wardrobe, and this is one that I really like and that I find really helpful, and that is I limit my fantasy self items to jewelry and accessories. Most of us have one or more fantasy selves that lives inside of us and and who also wants to go shopping. Some minimalists on buy less journeys will teach you and give you tips on how to stop shopping for your fantasy self, but I quite think that keeping that persona around makes for a much more interesting and personalized personal style. But it is true though that it doesn't work very well in everyday real life. Whatever your real life may look like and whether your fantasy self is a boho girl living on a ranch in Texas or a witch from the 17th century, a good way to invite her and compromise with her is to let her help you buy your jewelry and your accessories. Things that come from my fantasy self that I have incorporated into my daily real wardrobe, even at a wardrobe of this small of a scale, are spikes, studs, and fringes. This for me has been the ideal way to not deny that part of myself but rather to coexist and make peace with my fantasy self without needing to buy that version of me a lot of excess items that then just would not get anywhere. My next rule is that I don't like to get anything that isn't a winner in its category. The things that you love the idea about but that you would never grab for over the things that you actually love, leave those behind in store, on the hangers. Just leave them there, they still exist they will just not live with you at home. This is a rule and a way of thinking that I use constantly to be able to keep my small wardrobe small as it prevents me from bringing home stuff by accident all of the time. If I love the idea of a floral dress and I stumble upon one, I always think to myself, would I really grab this over my favorite black ruffle dress right now or tomorrow? Can I really see this dress taking over the thing that I already love to wear in this same category. Every day I were to put that new floral dress on would be a day that I couldn't wear my favorite thing or things of that same category. I also used to quite like the idea of a snake print, but if I were to look at it from a more what would I grab for in this category type of way, I can't see myself grabbing much for a snake print thing over my leopard print things and sticking to just owning leopard part print things, which I love, means that I don't have to, and I shouldn't have to, make the choice between the two prints in the morning. So snake print is just not for me and my wardrobe, just for that reason specifically. This way of thinking has really helped me keeping my wardrobe very small and only full of the things that I absolutely love to wear. My next rule is I don't get my interesting pieces from fast fashion. I'm against fast fashion in general, and I don't shop my basics there anymore either, but but that's not really the point of this rule and I think it's much more helpful put like this. The more interesting and unique pieces that you own are also what really helps you shape your personal style. And for me it's important that these things are of better quality and has a resale value. In general, fast fashion falls apart and pills quite quickly and are made in miserable places. And to me personally, the perceived value of that item is just so low before I even take it home. The feeling that a piece of clothing like that gives me and for the reasons listed above, as well as the fact that that item is made in extraordinary numbers, it makes me want to avoid the more designed and intricate pieces from fast fashion places and get something more special from either local or higher end designers, or at the very least I try to get something in more dignified quality that would have a value to someone else if I ever decide that my journey with that item was over. These are just rules and guidelines that I have developed and follow and 
they might not resonate with you and that's okay. They are my personal rules and not the law of the land. And they are not set in stone for me either and I frequently fail to follow a few of my own rules. And that's because, again, it's not the law. It's just the rules of my wardrobe and we are a quite lenient and understanding community. And as well as the fact that there are also exceptions to every rule. Like when I mentioned in my videos that fast fashion is always poor quality and you might think to yourself, not always. I have something at home from H&M that has lasted me six years. And you're absolutely right. There are always exceptions. But in general, the former is the rule. And when it comes to making decisions for my wardrobe and with my money, in general, I like to try to follow the rule and not make my decisions based on the exception that happens. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like so that I know, but also it really does help out my small channel. And if you're still here and you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so because in that case, I would love to keep you around. Thanks for watching and farewell.